and we're back. So there's actually something I need to fix and it has something to do with the uniforms. So we need to open up our squad and we have to delete our old axe uniform and add a new one. So it's going to be the same as before, but with one critical difference. Well, two critical differences. Uh, we need to change it to replace clothing. This ensures that they pick up both gauntlets and both boots. And then I'm actually going to add a male shirt to it. This will give them upper arm armor. And I want to give Grendel over at the unofficial Dwarf Fortress Discord server a thank you for pointing these two things out to me. Now we assign the uniform again and they'll... let's have a look at uh, our exploratory mining. Um, we're not going to mine out any more of this stuff because we don't really need it. We have some platinum here, which we can use later. I'm not going to bother with it right now. So we still haven't found the caverns, the first cavern layer. There's up to three cavern layers. We're looking for the first one right now. We're still too high up, so I'm actually just going to go down further. Let's start at elevation zero and we'll see if we can find it. I'm going to make this priority. And we're just going to go up just in one continuous line in, in all directions. I think we just have a pretty, I think we have a pretty deep end bark because, uh, because uh, our surface elevation is 41 and that's pretty high up. <laughs> it looks like the elves are back. Um, I don't know if they'll have anything worth trading, but you know, maybe they will. In the meantime, it looks like our miners have finally started on this exploratory section here at elevation zero. Looks like all of our doors are starting to become slightly more competent in combat, which is, you know, exactly what I want to see. Oh, it looks like we finally found the first cavern layer. It looks like we managed to dig right into the top of the layer here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to wall it off for now. We need to do some extra planning first. It looks like this is the deepest part of the first cavern layer. So we're going to open it up here and see we need to get some some more site around here to see if there's a good spot to set up a farm. Actually, now that I think about it, this spot right here looks like it would probably be a good spot to set up farms. So we're gonna actually gonna move the dig down to here and then we'll close this off with a bunch of walls. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is actually dig out these ramps. Um, so it's a little bit easier to close off everything because if you because then they can just go down here and then up the ramps. If I were to pull, put walls here, looks like we got another migrant wave. And then we open up the cavern layer. All these cavern floors are going to start growing stuff, which isn't a big deal. Now with those ramps out of the way, we can just build walls where they used to be. And while they start getting on some of that, let's also start closing off the rest of these entrances to, to this area. The whole reason why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that this area is as safe as possible for when we start placing down our farms. A priest for the heroic denomination has requested that we build a temple and appoint a priest. So I think I'm going to put it two Z levels below our bedroom area, just to give us some more extra room just in case. Um, we're going to make them pretty big because eventually they'll probably ask for a temple complex, which will most likely require us to make um, a bigger temple com uh, a bigger temple area anyway, so we're just gonna go ahead and do it now. I'll design the, the temple room something like this. I think this looks nice. Now with the walls, just the walls just about finished, I'm gonna go ahead and place down a slightly bigger farm plot. And then I also want a couple additional ones of smaller size. So our big farm plot is just gonna be all plump helmet seeds and our smaller ones are gonna be dimple cup, cave wheat, cave wheat, dimple cup, and then dimple cup, pigtails, pigtails, and dimple cups. Um, since I'm not sure why my seeds disappeared, we're gonna have to take some drastic actions and gather fruit outside and then brew that into drinks for now. <clears throat> so I decided to go ahead and dedicate some of our new migrants to planting and plant gathering. We can go ahead and disband all these farm plots up here. We won't need them anymore. Designate the temple as a meeting hall and then designate it as a temple for the heroic de denomination. We need to increase the value of this room so that it is valued at 2,000 dwarf bucks and becomes a temple. And one of the ways we can do this is by smoothing and engraving the stone, which we will go ahead and do now. First, by smoothing out the stones. It looks like now that the stone is smooth, we actually have enough to turn it into a temple and we're gonna go ahead and recognize the priesthood. So now we need to assign a priest and 
I'm not sure. I think we'll just go ahead and put Led Karamborek as our priest for the heroic domination. Even though we hit the minimum, I'm going to go ahead and add some furnishings and make it look nice. So first off, we're going to need a door and we have some chairs that we can go ahead and use. So let's create something similar to like a pew almost. So we'll do it in a line like this. And then I think we also need an altar. So we'll go ahead and make it out of wood. As a side note, the heroic domination has 11 worshipers in our fortress. And if you look, you can see the two aspects of the religion, fortresses and war. And it looks like their god is called Ordir Torch, Torch Scorches, probably. I can't tell because it's partially cut off. It is now early summer. I actually, I actually remembered that I want to restrict access to this to only, only members of the religion can visit this temple. And I'm going to do that for all the temples as we build them when we need to. So I've actually decided I'm going to make rock statues for the temple. And I'm actually going to designate a specific image. So we're looking for the heroic denomination. And this is a dwarven religion, so this is the correct one. It looks like the humans also have a religion of the same name, but this one is the one we're looking for. And I'm going to have them be diorite statues because we have plenty of diorite. And I'm only going to make four of them. Another reason why I'm doing this is because we can actually learn a little bit about, about the religion by making these statues and reading their descriptions. So we'll get to that. Nish, our fish dissector, has given birth to a baby boy. His name is Bomrek Canyon Secret. Well, hurry up and grow up and get back to work. A human caravan has arrived. The broker Toulon meets with the human high treasurer, Ersi. On behalf of the Merchants Guild, let me extend greetings to your people. There is much to discuss. I don't particularly need anything, so I'm just going to request cloth and some leather. And in return, they, they will purchase bars next time they visit. Now, last time we asked for dogs and cows. We're going to take as many as we can here. Adil, an administrator, has, is taken by a fey mood. Toulon, a broker, has given birth to Urist at Abbey Natures. Adil, our administrator, works furiously. I'm curious what he's going to make. Looks like those diorite statues are finished, so let's go ahead and place them down. And we'll have a look at them. It looks like our craft stores have asked us to make a guild hall, which we will, of course, approve. On top of that, the worshippers of the Doctrine of Cole want us to make a temple and appoint a priest, which we will also go ahead and accept. So I guess this, I guess south will be our temple district, and then north will be our crafts, our uh, guild district. So let's go ahead and, and design a guild hall. I think we'll design this guild hall like this, just to di differentiate it from the temples. Adil, our administrator, has created Nagutikul, a pecan wood chest. She offers it to the polished handles. Negative healed. This pecan wood chest, all craft store ship, is of the highest quality. It is studded with iron and encircled with bands of pecan wood. This object menaces with spikes of pecan wood and tetrahedrite. On the item is an image of blazing suns and pecan wood. On the item is an image of Toulon Shoot Dan Distance, the dwarf in cave spider silk. Toulon Shoot Distance is contemplating. The artwork relates to the possession of the dwarf Toulon Shoot, Dan Shoot Distance and Trammel Pick in the midsummer of 251. On the item is an image of the height of tides in theory, the wax opal bound codex, codex and yak leather. Very interesting. This is a, this is a finely crafted diorite statue of dwarves. The item is is a finely designed Im, designed image of dwarves and Odir torch, torch scorching, the deity of war and fortresses, depicted as a female dwarf in diorite by Zasset. The dwarves are praying to Odir torch scorching. The artwork relates to the formation of the heroic do denomination at Dwar authors in the early summer of fifty one. So this. Description right here details the founding of the heroic denomination, which was at at door authors in early summer of 51. What's interesting here is that Order of Torch, Scor Torch Scorching is depicted as a female dwarf, and I guess that means she is the deity of war and fortresses in our civilization. So here's the Amethyst Abbey. The Temple for the Doctrine of Coals. We're going to do the same thing we did last time, citizens and long-term residents only. And we're also going to smooth out all the stone. 
So now we're going to recognize the priesthood and assign a, a holy gold, which is the name of their priests. Looks like Nish here, our fish dissector, is pretty has pretty decent skills for this. So we're going to go ahead and, and assign them. Now we're going to designate a meeting zone for our crash dwarf guild hall. After setting down the, after placing down the meeting area, we click on new guild hall, and here we are the crash dwarf hall for the guild, the hall of. And much like the temples, we'll also start by smoothing out the stone, and we'll place down some furnishings as well. Oh geez, that's not good. The were mongoose hawk rope bed bedil has come. A large mongoose twisted into human form. It is crazed for blood and flesh. Its eyes glow green. Its charcoal hair is short and even. Now you will know why you fear the night. This is an emergency situation. We have no choice. Let's see if we can pull the lever in time. But I am not so sure. Let us go ahead and summon our squad and position them at near the entrance of the fortress. Dodok is in combat, and it looks like he's not doing too well. The Wehrmongoose has killed Dodok, one of our founders, and it is probably for the best. We accidentally closed the gate on ourselves, so now we're, we have no choice. It was hard to tell who got the finishing blow there. It looks like Udil, the furnace operator, has killed Hawk Pattern Dabblers, the were the were mongoose. And lucky for us, it looks like none of our axe dwarves were bit in the process. So, unfortunately, we lost one of our founders, but our fortress is safe. To commemorate this, I am going to build a tomb as he is as Dodok is one of our founders. We're gonna go ahead and build special burial chambers for our founder dwarves in the event that they die, just like Dodok has. We're also gonna need some caskets to store the bodies and some slabs to commemorate the dead. Which in this case is just Dodok. I actually build one too many, so I'm gonna go ahead and this will become our mass burial site for when we need it. Looks like the agreement to build the guild hall, guild hall has been satisfied, but I'm still going to go ahead and furnish it with some tables and chairs, which is what you need for uh, guild halls. I'm going to go ahead and make a rock statue to honor their memory. We're going to go ahead and engrave a memorial slab for Dodok. Here's Dodok's resting place inside of a pecan wood casket. Mudstone statue of Dodok Learn Portal. This is a mudstone statue of Dodok Learn Portal. The item is an image of Dodok Learn, Learn Portal, the dwarf in mudstone by Rawl. Dodok Learn Portal is laboring. The artwork relates to the settling of the dwarf Dodok Learn Portal and Trammel Pick in the early spring of 250. Mudstone Memorial to Dodok Learn Portal. This is a mudstone memorial to Dodok. The slab reads, in memory of Dodok, born 163 bled to death slain by the human hawk pattern dabblers the rim of meteors and the rampage of the human hawk the rim of meteors and trammel pick in the year 252 lover of crossbows well and now that that grim business is over with we need to make more bedrooms i think i'm going to start setting up the workshops for leather and clothing industry because it's getting to the point where um, we actually do need clothes, and luckily we do have some cloth and leather flying around, so we can make some clothes. Not a lot of clothes, though. Just maybe enough to uh, satisfy our dwarves' needs. It is now early autumn, which means we should be expecting a visit from the mountain home sometime soon. We also have enough dwarves now to go ahead and assign more, more manpower to our squad. So we're going to assign id udil dumed and Brigoth, as well as coddle and before i forget again we're gonna go ahead and forge 10 iron mail shirts none of our clothing shops are are built we're gonna go ahead and set up a repeating order <clears throat> so for cloth we're gonna make socks trousers and shirts and each of these is gonna have the condition that when there is less than 10 we're gonna make 10. We're also going to make 10 leather shoes when there are less than 10 
leather shoes in the stockpile. I prefer making shoes out of leather because they make more sense to me. So we're going to set up two additional work details, one for cloth making and the other for leather working. It looks like the goblins have chosen to reveal themselves. Four snatchers have come to kidnap our children, so we need to mobilize and kill them quickly or drive them off. Col Cobalt, we're going to target all of them and chase them down, hopefully to run them off or kill them. It looks like a combination of our guard dogs and our military dwarves have killed all of them. Actually, it looks like one of them got away because there's only three dead in this list. The caravan from the mountain home has arrived. The, exp the expedition leader, Atir, meets with the outpost liaison, Rigoth. I am your liaison from the mountain home. Let's discuss your situation. Merit deserves a reward, and I come empowered to establish this colony as an official land of our realm. Can you imagine the trade wagons? Of course, there are responsibilities, and the nobility must live well. Do you have anyone suitable to recommend for elevation? I can scarcely believe this good news. I have, I have some recommendations. Atir has led us for so long that I think he is the only reasonable choice to become our baron. As always, we're just going to request seeds of all the various underground plants that we can grow, as well as some plump helmets. We don't really need anything else. A need for cut gems is expected, and if you are able to provide some, the caravan will offer 200%. Sounds good to me. Of course, we're going to trade for seeds, gypsum plaster, because we'll need that for later. Yes, we'll take all their seeds, as well as their bins of cloth and leather. Zasset, our necromancer, was elected mayor. We're going to change our broker to Tyrus tier. As you can see, he's a trader, so he has legendary appraising, which is very good. We're going to assign someone else as our manager. Doesn't look like we have anyone else that we can use, so we'll just give, we'll just have Inod here be our new manager. Now for our baron and mayor, we're going to have to create new lodgings for them. We'll create it up here. I think this is how we're going to set up the lodgings for our baron. So this will be the throne room essentially personal dining hall up here and bedroom right here our mayor being lower on the social status will have something completely different and quite smaller like this is good enough for a mayor a special shout out to Melivorn from elder Gleam for allowing me to use their song Nice Gnomes and Friendly Fairies. Check out the description for a link to the album Mare Tenebrarum. And thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Uh, it really does help. YouTube requires me to ask you. I know it's a little cringe, but again, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.